Welcome to the next video in the Metal Machining series. Here we're going to be looking at dimensional control of machine parts lean approaches. So dimensional variations, there are different reasons for dimension variation. The machines which perform operations on the workpiece may have inherent inaccuracies built into them. The tools used on the machines are subject to dulling, general wear, chipping, breaking and differences occur during the replacement or regrinding. The material used for each part is subject to slight variations. Poor maintenance plan on machines. Machines do not have a scheduled preventative maintenance plan in other words. Incorrect cutting fluid causing localized cutting issues and human error in operations. Choosing the best machine for the job. Now machine selection is crucial. Depending on the shape, specification and geometry of each part will determine what machining process is required. For example, turning, milling, drilling or grinding. With all the machines available, you need to ensure your parts are being machined as efficiently as possible to produce the required product. Error proofing. Introducing pokeyoki. Pokeyoki is a Japanese term that means mistake proofing or inadvertent error prevention. A pokeyoki is any mechanism in any process that helps an equipment operator avoid mistakes. Its purpose is to eliminate product defects by preventing, correcting or drawing attention to human errors as they occur. This concept was formalized and the term adopted by Shigo Shingo as part of the Toyota production system or the TPS. Either the operator is alerted when a mistake is about to be made or the Pokeyoki device actually prevents the mistake from being made. In Shingo's lexicon, the former implication would be called a warning Pokeyoki, while the latter would be referred to as a control Pokeyoki. Shingo argued that errors are inevitable in any manufacturing process, but if an appropriate Pokeyokis are implemented, the mistakes can be caught quickly and prevented from resulting in defects. By eliminating defects at the source, the cost of mistakes within a company is reduced. Eliminating errors throughout the process, let's have a look at part loading errors. Here we see a simple punch die set. It's easy to place the top die incorrectly, in other words 180 degrees wrong, which not only results in incorrect parts being produced, but in this case it would result in damage to the die set because the pin punches and holes do not line up. Note, if operations are mostly manual, the most appropriate tool is usually mistake proofing, for example a better fixture that forces the piece to be placed in the right way or the tool can only be used in one way. On the left here we can see the correct orientation of this top die set. However on the right here we see this the top die is in the 180 degree wrong position. You see that the holes and the die pins do not line up. This will cause damage to this die set. Let's have a look at the die modification. With this small modification to the die set, it is impossible to fit the top die onto the bottom die incorrectly. The large diameter guide pin cannot fit into the small guide hole. Therefore, the part will always be punched correctly and the die set will not get damaged as a result of the top die being placed incorrectly. Let's have a look at some more die modifications through Pokeyoki or the error proofing examples. Here we have the production design intent. On the top there we've got the blank and the final article with a hole in the top left hand corner. 
the incorrect position is with the blank flipped and the hole placed in the incorrect position. Let's have a look at the die set with the clamp in place. So we can see here on the left, the blank is placed in the correct orientation. However, on the right here, we can see this is flipped and is now going to be punched incorrectly. Let's have a look at the Pokeyoki solution, which is simply adding an error-proof pin to the fixture. In this way, with a simple modification to the fixture, the blank can no longer be loaded incorrectly, therefore eliminating the risk of producing scrap parts. During production inspection, the objective of carrying out inspection processes during the production phase is to provide feedback to the factory or machine operator and to catch problems, if any, as early as possible. From a machining point of view, this inspection can be carried out at the machine or random parts taken in sequence and inspected against the technical drawing within a controlled inspection room environment. Let's have a look at a simple vision system checking in process inspection. We have the parts moving along the conveyor belt between one process and the other. The vision system is checking for correct parts or incorrect parts as they come through the conveyor system. Here we are seeing that the error detection is a warning system and is triggered because there is no hole in this particular plate. So therefore this part is out of specification and is wrong. The warning system can then alert the operator and stop the conveyor belt to eliminate further process issues. Now, if operations are mostly automated, the most appropriate tool is a laser sensor that stops the machine if a deviation is noticed or a vision system that alerts the operator in case of a problem. Let's have a look at another vision system checking in process inspection. Here we have an injection mold machine. So we can see that the in process vision system is checking mold components as they are ejected out of the mold. In this case, the vision system has detected a poor quality molding and has triggered the alarm to alert operators something is wrong. We can see that the sensors has picked up this poorly molded product with a lot of flash. Therefore, the operators need to adjust something or check the process before continuing and creating more scrap products. What to inspect? Well, critical dimensions. Having been through the product analysis in order to generate a full understanding of each part, a set of critical dimensions should have been identified. These critical dimensions are the ones that should be checked during production for a number of reasons. Cuts down the time to inspect each part, checks the critical dimensions or those dimensions that affect the fit and function of the part if they are wrong, and provides feedback on the production process to show if the machine is capable of producing parts within specification. How to monitor or well, monitoring critical dimensions. The most common form of inspection equipment is the micrometer or vernier caliper. These devices can check a number of different aspects of a component. For more complex geometries and for some geometric tolerances, the use of a three coordinate measuring machine or a CMM is needed as the base manual equipment is not capable to check certain things. Repeatable setup. Now remember, precision plus repeatability equals accuracy. The best practice for setting up any CNC machine is to optimize, simplify, and automate as much as possible so the minimal adjustments need to be made during each setup. This is possible through dedicated jigs and fixtures for each job, preset machine parameters, workflow planning that utilizes optional and dedicated tooling for each part. If dedicated tooling is shared between different parts, Planning should utilize this fact and run these jobs in series. 
So let's have a quick look at the summary. And again, I shall repeat, remember, precision plus repeatability equals accuracy. So one, there are many reasons dimensions can vary during production. Make sure you understand these reasons. Two, machine selection is crucial for producing the desired output at the right specification and cost. Three, error-proofing product loading can prevent costly mistakes. Four, during production inspection can eliminate large quantities of poor quality parts but early detection. Five, understand your critical dimensions as these are the ones that should be checked and monitored. And remember, precision plus repeatability equals accuracy. Now, over here on the right, it's a very simple diagram that explains the difference and the correlation between the accuracy and precision. In the bottom left, we have low accuracy, but high precision. On the bottom right, we have low accuracy and low precision. On the top right, we have high accuracy, but low precision. And our target is the top left, where we have the high accuracy and high precision. So I hope that becomes clear looking at this simple diagram. Don't forget to check out our other videos in this series, as well as other series we have on our channel. And you can contact us if you need any help with your projects in China. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. For more details and solutions, visit our solutions page at sophies.com. Thanks for listening. My name is Paul Adams from Sophist, and I shall see you in the next series. Thank you.